my dear young friend, I would suggest to you it's important to raise our sight to great vistas, to aim very high towards ideas worth living and even dying for. If our only goal is an unfocused craving for money and pleasure, our life project is somehow stunted. Spain has become a great casino, it's been said, and the same can be said also of many other countries. So why is the casino man not really free? What does he lack? Isn't he doing as he pleases in passing of whole days, playing with a machine in a bar? Isn't that a good exercise of the will? No doubt it is an exercise of the will, but it is minimal. Surely, human beings are in this world to do something more important. The question is, what am I using my freedom for? In the absence of a binding and attractive goal, one can just use his freedom for insignificant things. I want beer and potato chips. Here's a trivial desire, a small and narrow aspiration. A freedom bent on satisfying immediate needs is not true freedom, it's not true human freedom, but the sort of instinctive physical freedom that animals have. If you want to know a person, says St. Augustine, don't ask him what he thinks, but what he loves. The measure of freedom, then, is that towards which we direct ourselves. The greater our aspirations, the greater our freedom. What matters are the dreams that can become realities, the truths that inspire your life, the arduous, difficult, but exciting goods you have set yourself to attain. One must aim high in order to expand one's heart and mobilize one's energies. When you want to build a ship and seek people to do the job, says an old German proverb, don't tell them to gather material and make complicated calculations. Open up to them a yearning for the boundless sea. In his famous work, The Seven Last Words, spoken from the cross, St. Robert Bellarmine invites us to attentively meditate on the thirst which Christ endured on the cross. Our Lord from the cross, as from a high throne, casts a look over the whole world, full of men who are athirst and fainting from exhaustion. He, pity, he pities the drought which mankind endures and cries aloud, I thirst. Are you not thirsty to meet a God who, his son not sparing, sent him to die, who on the cross, your burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away your sin? How great you are, O Lord, and how much my soul is thirsting to sing how great thou art.